how could everything not work? Welcome to the season of 2022. I chose to stay for the worst winter in 15 years. It was cold, but manageable. Well, my body is worried. What if this happens every year? This is the latest year I can remember yet. We finished checking our hives yesterday on the 22nd of June, and we've only gotten around to them one time this year. Usually we get around twice. We took a fair bit of a shit kicking this winter, as did an awful lot of beekeepers in Canada. For me personally, the hives being weak wasn't the big issue. Having the higher loss wasn't the biggest issue. Having a whole bunch of these die. We're making up these nukes and our six frame doubles that we still brewed from are not in very good shape. So we're taking brood to make the nukes from our producing hives, which we don't like to do. So basically what we're doing is taking honey out of the barrel. Chaos. That's a good fallback. Other farmers don't have that option of being able to go to commercial yards and take brood. But you have to do what you have to do because nukes are the backbone of the operation. Like if you don't have nukes, then you have nothing to fix back the commercial yard in the spring next year. It's worth sacrificing some honey. It was an anomaly. The long, cold winter without any soft snow, without any bee flights, may have contributed to it, but it was kind of the perfect storm in a way. Combination of factors, then the fall was warm, so the bees were foraging a lot longer than they normally do, bringing in the honeydew that they can't process. Honeydew honey is made from aphids. Is there gonna be aphids every year? I don't think so. It's actually that protein that they need from the plants. So what do they do with all the extra sugar? They gotta pump that out of the... So if you're a honeybee flying around in fall after the bloom is done, and you come across some of this sugar being pumped out for free, what are you gonna do? Last summer was an extremely dry year, and I seem to re call dad talking about honeydew honey when I was pretty young. I think it likely was 61. And that seemed to have decimated a lot of yards, more so than the mites, more so than the cold weather, so. A bad winter, extremely cold, stressed the bees out a lot more. Yeah, they couldn't fly out and empty their guts. And the honeydew has a higher ash content and minerals, so the bees can't, they can eat it but they can't digest it properly in the winter time. Because the honeydew plug, plugs up their plumbing and, and they get double, triple, fourple dysentery in there. It, they just get sick. This winter was brutal, so they never had any breaks where they could actually go out and fly. In my beekeeping career, we've never had it before. I'm hopeful we don't have it again. I mean, I made two or three loads of honeydew honey. It probably costs us two or three times that in dead bees. Oh, we're struggling pretty hard, yeah. Like in a yard like this with 100 hives, we can usually, on a normal year, get like 130 brood out of it easily. Be lucky to get 50, 60. I don't want to compromise ourselves, you know? I want to graft today. Oh, you want to graft today? Well, yeah. we'll try it. Yeah, we have to. We've got to raise 2,000 queens in the next two weeks. How are we going to do that? It drains the yards too. Every time we do this, we lose barrels on the floor. Yeah, but we need the queens for next year. I'm hoping somehow this year works out somehow. Because we sure fight. We sure fight. Sometimes it's just mama nature's against you and you just have to roll with the punches and kind of somehow try to survive. You know, you know, you gotta play the cards you're dealt. You don't always get a winning hand. But if you persevere, maybe you can turn it into one. Yeah, I don't think the small farmers will have a very good year this year. If they're lucky, they might just break even because they can't really bring in packages from the states anymore due to disease and pests. Yeah, it was just a shortage of bees, so supply demand. That's what creates chaos and opportunity. So the nukes went up in a crazy price. We paid pretty big money for them. Money runs the world, Brent. It's kind of a shit thing when we have to start buying other people's stuff. The border's been closed since 1987. I mean, I remember back then, I was pretty panicky. You know, there's no bees available, there's no queens. We depended on those things. How in the hell are we gonna ever make it go? This is next year's honey crop. We basically become self-sufficient. Personally, we've gone down this road. We're quite pleased with it. It works well for us. I believe it can work well for anybody. For here in Canada, they're looking for survivor to the winter, pretty much. Kind of like adaptate to the climate. Winter's pretty rough. We've been lucky this year that so far our cells have been relatively successful and the numbers have stayed relatively good. The hatch out's been really good. That's good! Here in Canada, you don't have time for nothing. So you have to go really quickly and you have to be really efficient with everything. Two rounds is about all we can ever get out of these. The season's just too short. For me personally, doing this is probably the most pressure of the year. How much stress? A lot. Especially when we're grafting, desperate to know how many they took. Of course, we want to have more than 85%. As early as Jackie, we're pretty stressful of that. So we try to get all our nukes made up in that kind of a short time span. Many people in Saskatchewan went down this road, I think because of our mentors and because we saw 
a better way of doing things. Not everybody wanted to buy into that. There's some fear to overcome. I had it in the beginning. I didn't know how to graft. I didn't know how to raise queens. I didn't know how to do any of this stuff, but you just, you know, you just grab hold of it and do it and fail. Failure is important, you know. If you fail, you learn something. So, so far, it looks good because when we move grafting to the finishers, we lose some of them. And then when we move cells to the bank, we lose a little tiny over there. And then when we put cells here, we want to know how many they're hatching or not. So in the end, the real number, that's the important number that we have to know. So we have to keep tracking all that stuff. Numbers that are important, otherwise you don't know if the system's working good or not. You just, you can't remember. You gotta have good records. Especially in this company, we like to track in everything. Even the beekeepers. <laughs> you need records. You need good records. Amen. Honestly, if it was just the mites, we would have been laughing. We probably would have had extra nukes this year. We're going to make it one way or another. What did my buddy say? You have to break an egg to make an omelette.